Uh, thank you, Mr. President, uh, and I want to thank uh, your excellencies for very constructive uh, inputs. And um, I was also very happy to hear from the representative of Ireland who really brought up issues for interactive dialogue. And that's what brought us here. I'm sorry, Mr. President, I was here for many years in this, uh, in this uh, UN system. And sometimes we waste so much time in trying to define the concept why the reality on the ground is quite different. So for me, it's a reality check. Um, I, I would like to maybe respond first to, to the questions raised by the European Union. I would like first to say that the European Union invested so much in putting in place this mechanism of the Great Lakes region, having recognized that it could not be done from New York, it cannot be done from Addis Ababa. So there was a recognition that you need to get the regional solution to the regional problems, to engage the countries and leaders of the region to have sustainable solutions to our problems. But we see in the process that some of these institutions, the organization that supported the region to have their own security architectures have kind of abandoned. <laughs> The, the very raison d'etre of putting in place the International Conference on the Great Lakes region. And um, I must say we are, as uh, various regional organizations, we learn from each other, we meet. There's a regional forum on the prevention of genocide that is sponsored by, by the Switzerland, Tanzania, and the Argentina, which was referred to by Professor Andrea. And it is one of the forum that brings together representatives from the three continents, from Africa, from Europe, from Asia. Apart from that, we have uh, a number of uh, memorandum of understandings with various organizations, including, of course, the African Union, the regional economic communities, and the other research institutions, to be able to, to exchange experiences, share information, and come up with the common strategies. And they also ask whether how can the UN system help regional organizations develop their capacity and responsi responsiveness to address their responsibility to protect. For us, it has been more on mobilizing the political will, establishing strong regional institutions and national institutions for prevention, and I'm so happy that the most of the interventions are referring to the prevention. And this was the whole purpose of establishing this sub-regional organization that is close, close to the ground, and where you can see what is happening in the neighborhood and be able to prevent. So we see, we, 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 are, we define the responsibility to protect basically in terms of the prevention. And when I say that we incorporated, or the, the countries and leaders incorporated the pillars of the responsibility to protect, it's not about so much about intervention, but it's about the countries of the region assuming responsibility to be able to protect their own populations. And putting in place institutional mechanism that can help to, to put an end to what had happened in Rwanda. And again, I want to repeat that the commitment is never again. How it is being interpreted in these in this bodies is something else. But what is being done on the ground and what the countries so far have ensured that there will be no massive atrocities or killings in the countries, I mean in the region. So what we are putting to you is that there existing a framework, there exists legal instruments at the regional level there exists commitment, there exists a political will. So what we are requesting from the United Nations, from the membership, from the other organizations, is to be able to support these efforts of the countries of the region. And um, finally, we were asked whether we can engage leader with the member state that is experiencing the emergence of the responsibility to protect. One example was the the situation in Kenya. Nobody had predicted that there would be that such violence following the elections. But the region, the countries, myself, although maybe it's not said, but we really came to the rescue, to the aid of Kenya, and see that they could resolve it by the peaceful means and the dialogue 
that uh, was uh, embodied in the Pact on Peace and Security. And finally, on Andrea question, briefly, Mr. President, I want to say that now the focus is, uh, is uh, put on translating this very good regional initiative, regional instruments at the national level through domestication of the protocols, but also trying to build grassroots uh, responses to educate the masses and have what they call community resilience to any kind of uh, policies, activity that would incite people against each other. So this is where now it is being focused how to translate what has been uh, approved that or being uh, implemented at the regional level to the national level and the grassroots level. I thank you very much.